Many thanks for tuning in to Power Brief. Tonight we are looking on the state of Kenyan economy. And baby luck has smiled on us because we are having a person who has studied journalism, law, and he's been part and parcel of the legislative process in Kenya. That is Advocate Kennedy Mongare, who is a former senator of Nyamira County and is currently a practicing advocate. But actually, before we went for a short break, we were still looking at something to do with the national debt. <clears throat> and uh, when you look at the national debt, majority of the citizens, not only Mashinani, but even those ones, even the, the intellects, sometimes do not usually understand how national debt works. That those ones who even shout and says, Wacha ichukuliwa kwani takuwa na mnagani, si ni inachukuliwa tu wenye watalipa. So actually, we need to really help every other person understand how does national debt work and how does it affect the economy and the progress of any particular country as you break it down to a layman and any other person to understand. Now, national debt is the money borrowed by the country from foreign banks, even local banks. There's a time you can borrow from local, locally, but from local banks. There are times you buy from, you borrow from foreign banks. There are also are times you can put like the euro bond, you put the Kenyan, uh, you know, interests in a, an equity outside the banks at low interest, like the euro bond, you know, those are the times of borrowing which is done. Then it affects the common man because it's like Baba kwa muji ameenda mekopa. Kama aja adha rudisa yo pesa, familieta bit iripe. That's what happens in a, in a simple language. Mm -hmm. Now, these financial uh, bodies and even these countries that offer us these loans, don't they undertake some sort of a study? Because even yourself or myself, sometimes when I want to get a loan, they ascertain my credit worthiness. I love when I'm boss, when I ujalipa, ujalipa, namnagani sasa, tasaidiana pa namnagani. They do. Why has it been happening for Kenya as a country? No, no, no. They do because, like, uh, for instance, the World Bank at the IMF, they have their offices here. They know how much what the country is in terms of uh, resources. If they give a loan which takes 30 years, they know the country can pay. Like for the Chinese, you've seen there's a big challenge that there are many people who are asking, like the people of the coast, asking the government of Kenya, why are you, are you hiding the deal, the contract between the SGR, the Kenyan government and the Chinese government on the SGR? There are many debates which are going on why it's hidden. That's where you see the people of Mombasa arguing, maybe the collateral or the asset which was put in place for that loan was the pot. For the Chinese, they have done their feasibility studies. They know Kenya has oil. Kenya, you know, has these resources. If they have a pot, you cannot, nobody can give you a, a loan without a collateral. All right? So these are issues which you cannot blame those uh, donors. For instance, now, what Almost four or five years ago, the IMF and the World Bank warned the government of Kenya that your borrowing has gone higher. But if you want to borrow, do not go to those other funny banks outside, the, outside, outside Kenya. We can lend you the money with low interest rates, but we supervise. But you know, there are other schools of thought who argue that because of corruption networks in government, they didn't want this IMF and World Bank low interest loans because they couldn't get kickbacks. So they went to the Chinese and got high interest loans. All right? With the kickbacks on top. I'm, I'm, as a lawyer, I'm saying the allegations which are going on there in the financial matters. As we speak now, for the last two or three months, I've had the national government now is working on selling those higher interest loans to the IMF and the World Bank. All right? They will sell them expensively so that this, the IMF and World Bank will adopt them gradually to have them on their low interest rates. So the problem here is about the regime. The, the, the regime, how does the regime operate on this? But you see, on a scale, I say, Siri Kari. Siri Kari, 
vitu sio serikali ati ni siri kali and most of the things are hidden under the wraps but it will affect us our children and our children's children if it's not regulated and taken care of effectively but the beauty of the whole scenario all is not lost we have massive resources which are untapped we have coal in kitui we have coal in west bokot the oil if it's well regulated the oil from tukana if it's well regulated what we have in the in the in the in the, in the, in the waters in the seas if all these things are well tapped and regulated and we slay corruption effectively we'll be able to to deal with that loan and uh, Kenyans will uh, at least reap but not so soon i said the earliest we can start enjoying resources in this country is either 8 or 10 years you mentioned a very sensitive uh, thing about uh, collateral two years ago you remember what happened in zambia where they are saying their airport their international lusaka international airport had been auctioned by the chinese we try to go deeper to ascertain those allegations whether they were true or not now legally a country is in a position to give either an airport or a port or anything when they are getting debt yeah the, uh, like a, for a, for a, like a collateral mm -hmm. if you remember recently like four or five months ago two tanzanian uh, airplanes were, <laughs> were were impounded in south africa because of some debt which the government failed to pay to a particular foreigner he timed the tanzanian airlines too twice but these are the sort of the problems but we shouldn't go there because this country as i've told you there is massive resources the the country could have collapsed the, this country is very rich all right with the gold in in kakamega county i've told you the coal which is the untapped the coal from west pokot kitu even to the coast we have titanium in the in taita tafeta all these resources at it been for the west we can be able to deal with those uh, uh, very high loans we borrowed and it won't affect uh, the country it won't go that level of uh, you know getting to a state where they can inbound uh, inbound uh, kenyan facilities because this country is, is much fairer of it's i think the kenyan economy is like three times that economy of uh, of uh, zambia and they're not really inbounded per se because i saw those things online but i counter checked those are just threats now wakili when we look at all these matters uh, regimes comes and they go a regime comes in they take all these debts squander all opportunities with corruption and what have you another regime comes in with a different ruler and realizes that the former regime someone came in even gave uh, the airport as a, as a collateral and did their own business which didn't reflect to the people is there any room for this new regime to say now sisi hapa hatulipi na hivi na hivi na baki hivyo there are those arguments on the streets no you can't because they use who is using the stamp the stamp which is used is the republic of kenya used by the the ministry of treasury the documents are republic of kenya you can't run away from that all right so the only issue here is that uh, the citizenry when they are electing their people and, and, and governments they need to know which type of government which type of people we will putting there if they pile their heads in the sand and go tribal ways erect incompetent mcs erect incompetent um, mps erect incompetent governors this is the the reward you get by having incompetent people to uh, read you whatever because you borrow you are borrowing you are you are <laughs> or you are yourself you borrow to you donate it to a person to read you for five years so if you've lent me your shirt to go for it for a wedding for a week you can't come midway within two days and ask for it so this is a sensitive idea and then the appeal is that uh, the government also has to be very keen that uh, there's a, a time like I've, I've told you the 35 the 75 percent of the population which comprises of youth they can default because all these youths are not tribal the youths don't know about tribes these youths are they are in one characteristic that they, all of them are broke they have gone to school they have spent all the resources from their families right but they are chopless 
You see guys with MPS bowling uh, cats in town. You see guys with degrees. I have guys, I have my friends in the streets who have done commerce. They are shoe shining in, in, in the streets. This is something which will, at the end of the day, if the regime is not sensitive with all the, 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 the cries of these people, they will converge with one aim. That let's revolt and have a revolution in this country. Such a revolution will disregard all those debts. But with a regime which is type of pace and when communities culminate, say we are putting our, our own, that's why I said it's a, when we started, I said there's a timing bomb of the population. Energetic population, 75% of the population of people under that five. That's a wake up call for, the, for, for any governments anywhere in the world. You've seen these things happen in Venezuela, you've seen this thing happen in Beirut. You, oh, there's a time you cannot take people for a ride for too long. Because if the family, if an individual, there are two, three guys in the family, they have sold their land, they have sold their cows, all of them are graduates from a university, where do we expect them to go? The parents are ailing. They can't watch that. They'll say enough is enough. And that's a warning call. It's a short, uh, I mean, yeah. A warning call to the regime. The census they did is a wake-up call to the regime that you must remove the appetite for high interest loans, deal with the issues which are affecting a common man. A young person needs to have a pest. A young person wants to have soap. The, the basic necessities for life. Thank you, Wakili. Now, uh, earlier today we've been moving on the streets, meeting uh, business people right from the small scale holders and all those of them. So there are those ones who are complaining, no sales. Uh, you meet others saying we've been retrenched. You just saw the other day uh, Tuskies and other companies retrenching on a daily basis. And when you ask, citizens still do not really understand what's happening. So we wish Wakili to tell them what leads a country to find itself in such a scenarios. We have the KRA, Kenya Revenue Authority. Kenya Revenue Authority in the Naokota pesa yote ya taxes. Ikisha wakota ikiwewe kwa kikabu, achenda ya kwanza ya kuangalia ni loan kwanza. Before even we talk about sending the money to counties. Giving Caesar what belongs to Caesar. First, giving Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And the biggest problem again, the Kenya Revenue Authority is under-correcting the, 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 the funds which are required to pay the debts. So, what do they do? After every month, you hear about the Kenya Energy Regulatory Authority. One time they tell you that we have reduced fuel kwa shiringi moja. After one month, you'll be told that mafuta ya meongesa, shiringi ine. The people are renewing uh, the licenses, the people, small-scale tra traders. After the year, wakena kuri new races, wanapata wa meongesewa ilifu tatu. Wakiulisho hii, wanasema, sasa hii lazima tulipe loan. You see, it's suffocating the economy, because of those massive loans, senye natakana tulipe, as we speak, we don't get a leo hii. Counties, for the last two years, ajetumia pesa ya development, wameona magavana, wame kwa forced, kuenda kotini. The other day, you saw the governor sit with the deputy president, who is the chair of the council of economic... There's an economic summit which the deputy president chairs. Because he, he was explained from Treasury on the status, the governor said, My deputy president and Danganya. The next day, they went to the president. The president told them the same, same message. Two years, counties have not received money to do, especially, pending pills. Kunawatu wamefanya kazi kwa ma county miaka sita iliopita. Awachalipo baka sasa. Wengine wamekua auctioned, wengine wamekufa, wengine wako paralyzed. Then, you know, President Uru Kenyatta, on a decree, I don't know whether he understands such a decree, he said all counties must pay pending bills on such and such a time. How many counties have complied? Around 17 counties out of 47 counties. So, this, that clunch is affecting the common man you are seeing in the street who is complaining, come and to Melo. You see, you call over to Yalo, when you say, Kali, I'm buying a job ambao watu wengi walikuwa kwa hiyo serikali pengine hawaelewi vile uchumi naenda that's why tripo answer we said kibaki as an economist he understood he could stand and say hiyo hakuna na if you, if you saw if you were lucky to see kibaki move around 
delegation go to state house talk to him ah na sema na hiyo hakuna ina ndio tuambiane ukweli hakuna but i've never seen president who to tell people that there hakuna all right so those are the issues we are, we are having as a challenge as of now and uh, kenyans need prayers that uh, our leaders focus on mundane issues affecting the common man thank you so much bwana wakili but lastly give the country a piece of your mind as far as economic state of this country is concerned what is required is for kenyan state and their pals and the government to also to address uh, the issues of uh, the ballooning wage bill and as we move to this idea of uh, trying to see whether we can amend our constitution Kenyans need to be sober leaders need to be sober and for me i need that the youth arch committee take the role of dealing with the issues of our collecting fuse to see whether we are going to amend the constitution or not it should be moved from politicians because politicians as it were have become venom for the common man thank you very much wonderful thank you so much bwana wakili for your time the deep analysis and the insight that you've given us on power brief show it's been so much insightful and encouraging we also appreciate your feedback on our social media platforms till next time for me cornelius omuse i wish you a good night